What's going on guys, The Cob is back with another video. This time I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do the Leviathan on Prestige. The easiest way for each encounter. I'm not going to go over Underbelly, I'm not going to go over Coliseum Because those are practically a given on how to do it. You basically have everybody rush the first one and then two or three people, preferably two people, go for each flag afterwards while everybody else defends. So that's basically Coliseum. Let's move on to these encounters. Since Bathers is the first one this week, we're going to start off with Bathers. If you are interested in all the other encounters, I will leave timestamps down in the description below for you guys to click on that will redirect you to each encounter. So let's start out with Bathers. Now, Bathers is pretty self-explanatory. There's no big difference to Bathers except for the fact that the big fat boys that jump out of the pool water right there in the center on each area... Basically what happens is when you kill them, they drop an AOE effect that nullifies your protection. So what you're going to want to do for those guys is either be on your pad right here when you're on your pad. Either have a 1k, have a shotgun with a higher amount of damage, have Xenophage, or if you're a really, really beastly sniper, like really good with sniper rifles, pull out Whisper of the Worm and start headshotting him the moment he rises out of that. So the moment they start rising out... Start lighting them up, throw your grenade like so, light them up, kill them as fast as possible. Because if you drop, if they drop their AoE right there in front of where they jump out, that's perfectly fine. But if they get up on top of you and they drop their AoE on top of the pad right here, I think the AoE is like 5 seconds long, I haven't timed it, it's like 3 to 5 seconds long. So you'll literally have to jump off the pad and wait for the AoE to go away and then jump back on the pad, which will decrease... It will increase the amount of time you are going to be spending on pads, which is going to be bad. So, self-explanatory, besides that, Bathers is pretty freaking simple. You get, you get traded up on that pad, you then come to center, jump on this pad, get this orb, and then you go up to the top pad right here. You trade up with the guy that's on this pad, jump on here. He then leaves the pad right here, goes to center. If he wants to, throw a grenade every now and then, shoot some ads, clear some ads, grab the aura protection, and then head back down to the bottom pad. And then once when you get to the bottom pad, it's basically rinse and repeat. The guy off this pad goes back to mid. It's self-explanatory, very simple, very easy to remember. Just remember, as I said, kill the bathers before they can actually move after they jump out. That's the key factor in doing this correctly. Now, when it comes to damage phase... What you're going to want, if you have a Warlock, I found this out recently because I just started playing on a Warlock. If you have a Warlock, go to your Stormcaller tree and choose Chaos Reach, the middle tier. This one will allow you to take out a whole set of Lanterns by yourself. If you are not a Warlock, what you're going to want to pull out next is 1K, which will take out a whole set by itself in two shots. Basically, when you shoot it, you want to do this. Watch. You want to line it out like that. You want to do like a slash motion when you shoot the 1k. That will take out a whole set by itself within two or three shots. If you are not do if you do not have 1k, if you do not have a warlock with chaos reach, get a hunter. If you have hunters, pop a golden gun on one lantern, which minimizes the which decreases the amount of time you have to spend in here taking out lanterns. You have one taken out with one shot, and then just pull out your heavies. If you have rocket launchers with a lot of fucking blast radius, pull those out. If you ha just try to use something that's really powerful. Do not use primaries. Try not to use any secondaries. Just tighten with hammers that explode, warlock chaos reach, or hunters with golden gun, and then use your heavy uh, rocket launchers or xenophage or 1k. That's basically what you're going to want to do for this encounter to get this done really quick. It's really simple, really easy. If you guys saw one of my speedrun videos, we took out all three sets of these fucking lanterns in less than three seconds. It was really crazy, really amazing. It's really that simple. All right, so let's move on to doing this encounter and moving on to the next encounter after we beat this one. And then I got Crown of Sorrow. All righty. Um, now that we're on the... the Yeah, not Gauntlet. My bad. Now that we're on the dog encounter, this one's going to be a little tricky for you guys because what I'm going to do is actually show you a little picture on screen right now of the path that each dog takes because showing you it showing you the path on the ground is not going to do too well for you if i give you an overhead view you'll have more of an idea of where you can go and where you have to what you have to work around so 
right here on screen. You can pause the video right now. You can see the path that everything takes. And now that we are done with that image, let's get right into the dogs and everything. As you guys know, I'm also going to be using year one callouts as well as year two callouts together. Basically to help you guys understand this room and everything. Now, right here, obviously, Bones is L1. Plates is L2. The head, behind head, is L3. Trees is trees. Now, as for right side, statue is R1. Waterfall is R2. And pillars is R3. And obviously, caves is caves. Now, the thing is, with it prestige, there's going to be two more additional dogs added in here. There's going to be plate dog, and there's going to be cave dog. Those two are getting added in. So this is the best way you guys can actually get this done and the fastest way to get this done. What you guys are going to do is going to have the crystal runners. They're going to take L3 and R3, which is pillars and head. And the people that are leading and following are going to choose between plates L2, bones L1, statue R1, and waterfall R2. Those are the ones you guys are going to be choosing between. We're leaving trees and caves open for a specific reason this is the reason when you guys are damaging your dogs when you guys get either one stack it's feasible with one stack you can do it i've done it plenty of times either one stack or two stack of spores or if you guys want to keep going for seven eight stacks go right ahead if you have time once when you guys have your stack of spores you guys are going to go to your dogs keep in mind before you even start this up you want to have people designate what dogs they are going to Basically, when someone says, oh, I want this, oh, I want that, don't talk or say what you want. Go to the indication spot of what dog you want. So if someone wants a certain dog, run to it and stay at it until everybody is at a dog and everybody understands where they're going. That way, there is no confusion. There's no mix-ups. It's all solid, set, and done. Now, every person is in charge of killing their own dog on Prestige. You are not going to get help killing your dog. You are in charge of killing your own dog. If you can't kill it, you got to fix your loadout or you got to fix something because no one's going to help you. Basically, this is the reason why. When R1 gets done killing their dog, they're going to come immediately to caves. If R2 gets done killing their dog, they're going to come to caves as well. Same thing with R3. If you go to caves and you see someone there killing a dog at caves, help out. It doesn't matter if someone's there or not. You're not running away. You're going to help with caves. You want to get this done as fast as possible because there's, as I said, two additional dogs. So you got to deal with that much more health to take out. So you need to help with caves. You need to help with trees. You are not getting help on L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, R3. You are not getting help on any of those dogs. You are in charge of taking out your own dog. So again, when left side L1, L2, L3 gets done, you run the trees immediately and help out with that one. When right side gets done with their dog, you run the caves and help out with this one. Very simple, very easy. It's simple callouts. The reason why I'm using year one callouts along with year two callouts is because year one callouts, the way we did it back then in year one, is we called out the locations on what they looked like. Bones looks like bones. Obviously, plates looks like plates. Head is behind the head. Pillars is a pillar area. Waterfall is a waterfall. Statue is a statue. That's how we did it in year one, but we don't do that in year two anymore. We do L's and ones and things like that. So now that you guys understand that, let me give you a basic description of where you're going to go. If you are here at L1 and you kill your dog, you are immediately going to take a 180 and run straight in here to trees. If you are at L2, again, you're going to do a 180 behind you and run straight to trees. Again, behind head, what you're going to want to do is when you get done killing your dog, which, uh, did it pop up? I think where is oh yeah it's, it's gonna be right here i forgot you kill your dog right here he gets done barking at it and whatnot you do a 180 turn around go inside trees right here and then help out with it and damage it now for right side it's going to be the same thing you're going to be doing a 180 on every spot wherever you're facing your dog you get done killing your dog here at r r3 keep in mind i have run into this glitch i don't know why they're doing it I've had times where the dog is so close up against this thing, his head is inside of it. So what you're going to want to do is actually have to run at it and slide just to push him away from it. Just so you can get a good shot at its head if you're using precision damage. If you're using a sword, don't worry about it. Just swipe at his ass and kill him. Once when you kill the dog, immediately 180 turn around. Go through here. Go right into caves through this little crack and help out kill it. R2, same thing. 
You get done killing your dog right here. Turn around 180. Hang a quick left. And go through this crack. R1, same thing. You hang a 180. Turn right around. Go through this crack right here. Jump over this rock. Go in here and kill this dog. Very simple. Very easy. Very easy way of completing this. Bathers and dogs are practically two of the easiest encounters. It probably are the easy, easiest encounters in this raid. The only ones you guys are really going to have trouble with is Gauntlet, which I'm going to help you with in this video, obviously. And Callus, obviously, I'm going to help you with that as well. So, if you guys want to take a pause right here, pause the video, and then time skip stamp in the description to the next encounter. Alrighty, now that you guys have made it to Gauntlet, this is how you really, really, really should run Gauntlet. This is the easiest way. I've taught a lot of people this strategy, and... I've always asked them, in their honest opinion, what do you think is easier? The normal strategies that you guys have been hearing or the strategy that I just got done teaching you guys? And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just saying what they've been saying. They have said that this strategy is easier than all other strategies that they have learned, even on normal. This strategy that makes prestige look easy is going to make nor normal even easier. So let's get right into it and start this up. Um, please don't touch cup. Um, now, okay, cup and axe are up. Please don't touch those pads. Now, we're going to use dog plate. Just forget that there's a dog symbol up there. Just forget that that dog symbol's up there. Pretend it's every. Pretend that's a dog and cup symbol. All right, so what you guys are going to want to do, and, well, actually, you know what? Pretend that symbol is every symbol. We're just going to stay on this plate, and I'm going to give you a gist of everything. So, what you guys are going to want to do is, once when you guys step on all the pads that are out here in Gauntlet, what you're going to want to do is immediately, the moment you hear the dong dong sound, you want to run straight in here. People on Cup Team are going to go against that wall right there for Cup. People on Dog Team are going to stay against this dog uh, symbol right here against this wall. Now, keep in mind, if you are getting shot from this and shot from all angles, Dog Team, if you have to move, go to that wall or go to this wall. Cup team, that wall, that wall. That way you guys don't get confused on where you have to be and you don't, like, mess up the time timing for everything. So, once when you guys are in here and you hear the gong gong sound, have someone count down from 25. Literally, when I say countdown, I don't mean 29, 28, 27, 26. I don't mean fast. I mean 25, 24, 23, 22. Basically at that speed. Once when you get to zero... Run out and start killing everything. That way you only have to take out one wave of enemies. And that way nothing else is spawning and you're not getting shot from left and right. You just have to clear the enemies that are right here. After you clear out those enemies, take out the scions that are going to be hiding behind the torches or the braziers. That's what they're called. Those are braziers. Um, take out the scions that are behind the braziers. And then after a second or so, you're going to have the big boys come out. When the big boys come out, go ahead, use your supers, use Xeno, whatever you have to use take them out and annihilate them once when you get done clearing out all pads dog team is going to be in charge of taking out sun and dog cup team is going to be in charge of taking out cup and axe once when all plates are cleared out and you hear the dog gong gong sound again the orbs are going to spawn up for you for the runner to take now since this is prestige this is the alteration on prestige gauntlet the game mechanics will not let the same runner run twice it doesn't matter if you shoot and kill yourself. It doesn't matter if you jump off the map. It doesn't matter if you join, leave and join back. The game will not let the same runner run twice. It won't happen. You can't do it. So, this is what you're going to want to do. So, as I said, pretend this pad is cup and dog. For cup and dog pad, what you're going to want to do is have the first person that's doing plate stand on the plate like so. That person is always going to aim right where I'm aiming right there. You are in charge of shooting the topmost button. What that means is the very, very top button that does not get called. Meaning if they call top button, if they call whatever top, you have to shoot mid. If they call mid, you shoot top. If they call bottom, you shoot top. People who are shooting topmost never shoot the bottom button. People who are on bottom on doing ground, you never shoot the top button. People on ground, you choose between middle and uh, bottom. People on plate, you choose between top and middle. So, as we said, plate runner, you shoot the topmost button. Person on the ground, you shoot the bottommost button that does not get called. So if they call middle, ground shoots bottom, plate shoots top. 
If they call bottom, ground shoots mid, plate calls shoots top. If they call top, plate shoots middle, ground shoots bottom. That's basically how it is. If you can understand what bottom most bo and top most means, you will nail this down, no problem, easy peasy. Now, say you guys have shot your buttons, right? You shot your buttons and whatnot, and the runner goes to get their orb. The moment their body disappears behind the buttons, that's when the person on ground wants to start running up to their scion. Because by the time they drop down on the other side, a pr uh, well, let me use the real names for these guys. The counselor, by the time they get behind the buttons, the counselor is going to start spawning up. So by the time they drop down on the other side, the counselor will spawn up inside its bubble. You go ahead and melee it, kill it. And the guy on ground, after killing it, is going to run over and rotate to the next plate and do ground for the next plate and shoot bottom most for this plate. As for the person on plate side, because you guys are probably wondering what about the guy on the plate, the person on plate, after he jumps through and gets to the other side, you're going to want to look for your projection. So while your ground person is in charge of taking out the counselor that's right there, your job is to look for your projection. That's either going to be, I'm going to show you for each pad where the projections will be. For dog, your projection will either be on that platform, on top of that brazier, that brazier, that platform, or your pad. That is where the projection will spawn. Projections you have to shoot. You cannot melee them. Counselors you cannot shoot. You have to melee them. So, after, you, after the plate gets done taking out his uh, projection, and the ground guy gets done taking out his uh, counselor, you guys immediately run and rotate to the next pad. Immediately. And then rinse and repeat on the next pad. Now, ground guy bottom most button that does not get called plate guy top most button that does not get called you guys help each other out again for sun your projections can spawn on that pillar about above that brazier that brazier that pillar or your plate those are the spots where your projections will spawn again ground guy take out the counselor plate guy take out the projection immediately rotate to the next pad once when you guys get to the next pad same thing Plate topmost, ground bottommost, take out your counselor on, on the ground. And for the plate guy, what you're going to want to do, projection, 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 and then projection. Those are your spots for projections on this on uh, cup. Now, again, you guys get done, rotate to next pad immediately. Ground guy, bottommost, plate guy, topmost. They jump through, ground guy, take out the counselor. Plate guy, projection, projection, projection projection and projection now keep in mind with axe this is tricky because you got these massive pillars that are blocking your view of that and that so you might have to drop down on this side or the back side doesn't matter where you drop down shoot your projection get rid of it rotate to dog and as i said with dog we already said it counts projection 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 and that's basically it once when you guys get done, this is how you rotate. When you guys go back to the middle, and then you do your countdown, and you slay, the guy on plate, it's like forming a line for lunch at school. If you know how to form a line for lunch at school, you can do this encounter easily. The guy on plate becomes ground. The guy on ground becomes runner. The guy that's runner becomes the guy on the plate. And then you just rinse and repeat what you did last round. Once when you get done, you guys go to middle. Now keep in mind, as I said, the guy that's on when you guys get done killing everything and you come out, again, the guy that's on plate goes to ground, the guy on ground goes to run, the guy that runs goes to plate. It's very simple, very easy, very simple to get, get the hang of. Once when you get the flow and the rhythm going, this is going to seem like a walk in the park. Trust me. It's very good, very easy strat to do. You guys don't have to worry about sun or axe at all. Unless you're going to clear out ads before you do the run. That's the only time you have to worry about sun and axe. So remember, you guys clear out ads, you come out, runner goes in, you punch counselor, shoot projections, next pad. P shoot buttons, punch counselor, shoot projections, next pad. Rinse and repeat all the way around the room until he gets through the finish line. He comes in, slams in the middle, you guys follow them to the mid. Bada bing, bada boom, bada bam. Now, we're going to move on to the... Uh, final run. Now, we're not going to go in. I know I can't do a little theater mode cheat code or whatever, but we're going to pretend that we went in, right? 
say this is a starting line that you guys all spawn up at, right? You guys all spawn up right here. You guys are at dog, right? So, this is what's going to happen. There's only going to be three orbs. You guys are doing this as a two teams of three. There's dog team and cup team. Three people on each team, three orbs, one for each person. Now, when you guys spawn up, dog team goes first and dog team goes third. Cup team goes second and fourth. Dog team, after cup team gets your fourth set of orbs, dog team is going to grab the final finish line orbs and go through and teleport. Everybody else that did not that does not grab the finish line orbs, just run through the finish line, jump in the air so you don't fall down in the um, hole in the ground, and you'll get teleported outside, and you'll run to the middle and slam. This is how you're going to do the run. You start up, dog team, you see your orbs, call top left, middle, middle, left middle, right middle, bottom mid, call whatever. Whoever wants an orb, you... Okay, um, dude, I'm doing something. All right. Basically, dog team, you're going to call which ones you want. The people that call, those guys get those orbs. You guys go ahead, jump through, get your orbs, drop through, and continue running. Once when you guys get to the next set, which is sun, cup team is going to go next. Keep in mind, after you guys call what orbs you want, the floor is going to drop out right behind you right here. This floor is going to drop out right here. This is going to start dropping down. So when you drop through, try to land right there on that floor and then jump across. Now, again, you guys get done, you run around, go to the other side, dog team is getting next. Dog team calls which ones they want, rinse and repeat, you guys grab those. Next, cup team goes. After cup team gets their shit on X, you guys jump through, keep on running, watch out for the holes in the floor, and keep on going. Dog team is going to come to the finish, dog team is going to go to the finish line, grab their orbs, teleport out. Cup team, you run through the finish line and teleport out. Everybody goes to the middle, got Space Jam slam that shit, and you guys are done with Gauntlet. That's as easy as it can get. You cannot get any easier. The only, e the only other easy way you can do this is a strategy I'll post later if you guys want to understand how to do it. It's not a glitch. It's more of you're abusing the mechanics in the game. I'm not going to go over it. If you guys want to understand that strat, I'll upload a separate sh video strictly showing you guys how to do that strategy. I will have help on that one. I will get other people who have recording devices so I can get alternate views of everybody else doing their thing so I can get it all put in the one video so you guys can better understand the strategy. So, if you guys enjoyed this um, gauntlet video, don't forget to leave it a like at this moment. But if you guys want to skip to Callus, again, timestamp down in the video below. Click on the, in, well, not the video, in the description below and you can skip to Callus timestamp in the video. So I'll see you guys on that checkpoint. All right, now that you guys are ready to clap some callous cheeks, this is what you guys are going to want to do. The weapons you are going to want for this is Divinity, Xeno, 1K, Whisper, or Sleepless with Autoloading Holster Cluster Bomb, or Sins of the Past Autoloading Cluster Bomb. Those are the weapons you're going to want for this. You can use a Cold Heart, but it's not suggested seeing as how that was a year one strat, and so much stuff has changed since then, it's practically not needed anymore. You can use it, but just make sure you have at least one gun. If you're doing Void Room, make sure you have at least one gun that has an insane amount of RPM and a really good reloading time for Skulls. If you're in Throne, make sure you have one gun that's good for taking out Cabals and whatnot and adds preferably a shotgun. So, once when you have your weapon loadout set, all your Warlocks are running Well of Radiance, your Titans are running Bubble, your Hunters are running uh, Celestial Light Hawk Golden Gun, Start on the right side or left side of the room as a group, clear out ads, then move to center and clear them out, then move to the opposite side of the room and clear them out. This ensures that no one is going to die and everybody has a way of protecting each other. So if one person is falling weak, they can fall back behind the group and stay safe while the rest of the group helps them out and clears out the ads. Now keep in mind the main priorities of taking things out in this room if you can't get it done in time is the incinerators and the scions those are the two people you want to take out first after you take them out take out the cabal with the shields and then after that go ahead and take out the dogs that is the main priority situation of this now once when callus gets ready to clap his hands you guys want to make sure you have people designated to left middle and right orb left middle right void this is how it's going to work on the first part right here when you first go in you're going to have projections first. You're not going to have ground scions. 
Right side, put Callus' symbol on the top right corner of your screen. Middle, top middle. Left side, top left corner of your screen. Call out your symbols. Shoot your projections. Yell clear when you kill the first one. Thrown guy that's going to be punching is going to be punching the um, symbol that's not called. He's going to get teleported in, and one guy's going to get teleported out. That one guy that gets teleported out is going to yell mid out, right out, or left out, depending on where they are. If left gets teleported out, middle has to go left. If right gets teleported out, middle has to go right. The reason why I say this is strictly due to the fact that the people that are in void and not get teleporting out are going to be able to get into position to cross shoot faster than the guy that's getting teleported in. So the guy that gets teleported in, all he has to do is shoot what's in front of him and then fill the role of left or right that gets teleported out. So keep in mind, when it comes to scions and you're done with your first projection and every other one is just scions, kill out your ground scions first and when they're all cleared out, yell clear and then they'll punch the um, counselor that's in the throne and then you guys work on your projections as the uh, person gets teleported in. That way, nobody's getting launched when they get teleported in. No one gets launched. Once when you get to the end right here, make sure you have a healing rift, preferably a healing rift warlock in here, just so you guys do not die from too many skulls. N throw down your healing rift, have someone down themselves in throne, one person, and then that will allow you guys to get more skulls inside void. So go ahead and take out your skulls right here. As you guys can see in here, my screen is bright, right? Right now, right? It's got like a light tint to it. And then just now, my screen just went dark. There is a, there is a visual cue. It goes from a light screen to a darker screen. Once when you can nail that down, you will understand when to take out Callus' shield. Once when you guys take out Callus' shield, go through. Honestly, I don't know what the heck that was. I glitched right there. I don't know what that was. That's the first time that's happened to me. Do not jump over anything. Boots on the ground. Just do not jump in the air for any any reason, shape, or form. Boots on the ground all the way to sun plate. Go ahead and clear ads. Once you guys are ready, pop the bubble in between dog and sun right here. And then jump up. Pop your well of radiance. And then go ahead and shoot Callus. And then just light his ass up. Once when you guys start shooting him, you do not want to leave the pad for any reason, shape, or form. If you have a well of radiance and Callus is going to shoot your pad, do not jump, do not leave, you will survive. If you are shooting Callus and he becomes immune, that's when you want to rotate to the next plate. Pop your next well of radiance, pop your healing rifts, go ahead and shoot Callus until he is immune. Again, rinse and repeat, shoot him until he's immune. If, you got, if he's immune and his health is not done, rinse and repeat to next pad. Keep in mind, when he does his Goku spirit bomb pose like so, you can leave your plate. You don't need to be on it. Just go ahead and shoot him. Throw whatever you need to kill him. Break that shield. This this encounter is that simple, that easy. So, again, for the plates, Well of Radiance on one plate. Shoot him until it says immune. If he's going to shoot your pad and he's not immune, just let him shoot your pad. You have a Well of Radiance that's going to protect you. Let him shoot the pad and keep shooting him until he's immune. Do not trade plates until Callus is immune. You want to get the most time out of each plate that you can. So if he's immune and you're shooting him on a plate, immediately swap to the next plate and start shooting him until he's immune again. The reason why he goes immune is because the plate has run out of time. It's not because Callus has run out of damage time. It's because your plate has run out of time for buff. So that's when you want to rotate to your next plate. So if this video has helped you guys out in any way, shape, or form, if you have any questions, any at all, feel free to comment down below. If you guys want to see other strategies like the two-man strat for symbols, the string strat for symbols, for that'll work for the a whole team of six people. Anything you want to know, just comment down below. I'll find a group of people to go do the raid with, and we'll I'll start uploading more strategies for you guys later on in the future. So again, thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you guys for subscribing. Um, I'll see you guys in my next video. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get it up in time, but the video will be up at some point in the near future. So as always, you guys know. <laughs>
Let's go.